Hey everybody, it's Julie for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be doing some mirror image stamping. And I've done this before in the past, but I'm using a method that is new to me. I'm going to be using the Mini Misty, and I learned this by watching a two-minute tip technique tutorial by Heather Campbell. And it was really so well done, and I really wanted to try it because it looked like, hey, man, I could do this. So I wanted to try it out. So I'm going to grab my Misty. I'm going to rotate it so the lid opens on the left. I'm right-handed, but I found that it's better for me to keep the lid on the left when I'm doing this particular technique. Now, I've removed the foam from the base there so I can go all the way down to the bottom of the platform. And I'm going to place that piece of clear plastic. Now I cut it to A2 size. I don't know why I did that, but that was the size I chose. And I'm going to mount that little birdie. She's so cute from the Everyday Doodles set right there onto that piece of clear plastic. And you'll notice I've got uh, magnets anchoring that down um, because I don't want it to shift at all. And then I'm going to take a background image. This is one that has all kinds of patterns, but it's a large expanse on the other side and it's got lots of support. So I couldn't do this with an outline image, but this has lots of solid images imagery and lots of support. I'm going to use this as a reverse image by putting it face down onto the lid. So you can use reverse image stamping blocks if you have them, but you can use an image like this as a substitute for that. And it's great because there's different sizes of those types of background images that all have, you know, a really good solid foundation. So this is going to become my reverse image block. Now I'm going to take some pigment ink. This is VersaFine Claire, and I find that for this technique, pigment ink tends to work better for me than using a dye ink. I don't know if that's true for everybody else, but that's the way it works for me. So I'm going to ink up my little birdie here, give her a nice coat of black ink. Oops, got a little smudge there. And then I'm going to close the lid and transfer her from uh, the image onto that the back of that background stamp. And there you can see um, she's planted there and I'm going to re-ink the stamp. I want to get lots of ink on there and it also is a good idea to make sure that your pigment ink pad is well inked and it's not dry because you really need a juicier image for this to work the best. So now I'm going to remove the clear plastic with the little stamp, set that aside for a moment and grab the foam, put that back in and then I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. This is just Nina Solar White A2 I need to make sure it's flush tight into that corner, and then I'm going to anchor it down with the magnet. Now, I'm going to press firmly when I close that lid and transfer the image. And I did use two hands, and I did, you know, it's like kind of the CPR method. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure I transferred all that ink. Now I wanted to see if I could go ahead and get an impression of her in the right direction that she normally would be in. And so I just inked her up there on that piece of clear plastic and decided to use that as my mounting system and made an impression. And lo and behold, I got some really good crisp impressions there. And I thought it was really cool that it turned out so crisp and clean. And I've got this pair looking at each other. Now I decided that I didn't get quite as a... Uh, inked up an impression on the bird that I did the reverse image on. So I decided, okay, you know what, let's see what happens if I try to re-ink it. So I went ahead and popped the clear plastic back in, re-inked, re-transferred to the uh, image there, solid image, and then swapped everything out and brought back my white cardstock. And I re-stamped again perfectly over the birdie. And woo! I got a nice even, it just looks identical to the other one. So Nina and I got really excited. So I was like, ooh, let's do some more. <laughs> so <laughs> I grabbed her and I re-inked her again. And I'm just going to, I'm practicing because I had never done it this way before. And I was really impressed with the results that I got. And I got to tell you, because force of habit for me um, is to always stamp with the lid on my right hand side because I'm right handed. It really helped me do a much better job by having the lid on the left because it forced me to slow down and think about the steps I was doing. Now I've sped up the camera a little bit, but I was really glad to see that, okay, you know, this is a way I can get myself to slow down 
and be a little bit more careful because I get, when I get going, it's like, bam, 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 bam. So I just wanted to test again whether or not I could get a good impression of that little birdie there. So I thought, okay, let's try it again. Now, I didn't support it as much with my fingertips, and I wasn't as impressed with this impression, but I was like, okay, let's try it again. Practice again. Ink it up and restamp it because I had this whole quarter sheet of white cardstock, and I plan to die cut them out anyway, right? So I'm just like, okay, just keep going until you get an impression that you're happy with. And then you know the secret uh, way of doing it. And you can repeat that process next time and always have success. So now I'm going to trim out the two birds that I was happy with. And I'm going to use some colored pencils. Now I did hit them with a heat gun just to make sure that the ink was fully dry because I had re-inked my pad just prior to doing this. And there's a lot of ink on there. And so the images were very rich and dark. And I wanted to make sure that the ink was dry before I started going over the top with my colored pencils. And I didn't want to smear anything. So now I'm just going to quickly color these in. And I'm not an expert with colored pencils. These are the Prismacolor pencils. And I just decided, OK, these colors look nice together. And that's what I'm going to do. I don't know color theory. I don't care about color theory. <laughs> I just like, does this look good to me? Yes. Okay, let's use it. And that's how I roll. So now I'm just going to finish coloring my birdies and doing all my shading. And I think that's really fun. I wanted to add some rosy cheeks with that uh, red pencil. That's kind of an orangey red. So get that colored on there. And then you can see how cute my little birdies look. So they're colored all together. So this is a way to use that set Everyday Doodles without having to use the solid filler. You can color them in any way you want. You can use Copic markers. You can use colored pencils. You can stamp them on watercolor paper and color them that way. Whatever floats your boat. OK, so I die cut the birdie on the right. That's easy, right? Because that's very deliberate. It, matches the stamp. But then what about the other one? How am I going to get that cut out? So I first cut out the shape out of a post-it note. And then I saw how Heather used the flashlight on her iPhone. And because I'm using my phone to actually film this video, I, did, I couldn't use my phone's flashlight. So I went and grabbed a headlamp. <laughs> We always have these for going out in the dark around the yard, chasing down the dog, whatever. Um, so I used that as my flashlight so I could see through the paper the impression of the bird on the other side of the paper. And then I could line up that mask that I made with the post-it note. And it has a little bit of sticky there. And I'm just going to bring this up to the camera so you can see how I did that and how I was able to see where to line that up. So that's the trick. And I guess Heather learned this from Jennifer McGuire. And oh, genius, Jennifer, awesome. So I'm using it. And it's really a great way to do this. Now, on thicker paper, you'd probably have a lot of trouble seeing the image. But on 80-pound Nino Solar White, you're golden. So now I can go ahead and line up that little die within the mask that I made. Or I guess you could call it a die-cutting jig if you wanted to. And then send that through my Gemini Junior. So when I came back, it's all I have to do is peel this away. And you can see that my bird got die cut perfectly in reverse image. So sweet. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and pop her out. And I cannot tell you how excited I was that this worked. Um, the edges of the die do create... A, a curvature around the edge that kind of flips upward on this reverse image rather than downward like it does with the birdie on the right. So in order to flatten out that little bit of curved edge there, I just took my Teflon bone folder and just went across all the edges there. So it would just burnish them down. And so now they look, you know, identically uh, stamped and die cut. It's like, oh my gosh, I was giddy when I got to this point. So now um, I'm kind of winging it here. I wasn't quite sure of the card project I actually wanted to make with the birdies. I was just really into trying to do the reverse image thing. So <laughs> I grabbed the little scallop, rows of scallops, that background block from the wonky backdrops, and I rotated so it's kind of upside down and centered that on my base card. This is Nina Solar White. And then I thought some more, like, okay, what do I want to do? And then I decided I wanted to have this little birdie given a flower to the other birdie. So I grabbed the dandelion from the handful set and got everything kind of all positioned there. I just want to make sure um, everything's going to be lined up where I need it. So I'm going to move those birds out of the way now and go ahead and ink up the dandelion. Just needed to get it mounted so it would stamp where I needed it. And you'll notice I switched from the larger Misty to the smaller one at this point because I was going back and forth. What do I want to do? How do I want to do this? And then I'm going to grab the little cheer up 
I wasn't sure even even until this point which sentiment I wanted to use from the everyday punnies. <laughs> so <laughs> I was torn between, oh, do I want to say this? Do I want to say that? I'm just going to go with cheer up because I think it's cute. And I wanted to get the stem stamped on the little birdie die cut so that it shows up and it's not obliterated by that shape on the card front. So I'm just going to stamp over the top of it really quick. And it's just a really small detail, but it does show on the card. And it's just kind of a nice way to get that um, finished effect there. So it looks like the birdie is really is holding the flower because I line all that up properly. I got some foam tape on the back. And there we go. So I've got my little scene there. Got my little cheer up there. And the card is done. I think it's so cute. And then I finished off. I took the other panel and trimmed it down and added a balloon and some star sequins and finished it off too. So I had two cards. And this is such a fun technique. So I hope you'll give it a try. And thanks for watching.